knowing of his deep mental reservations and the possible, possible unexpressed attitude of racial discrimination. Now, you know who wrote this? Carver Gaten, my football coach and U.S. history teacher that quit in 1963 and joined J. Edgar who was the FBI. If you don't believe me, type Carver Gaten into the internet search engine, Carver Gaten JFK assassination. He's in the middle of that. Now, I'm giving you this background because Mr. Carl, my fellow longshoreman, is going to give you the presentation on what qualities and the six things that you have to qualify for one to be a historical site designation. But I just wanted to give you a little background on my family, my relatives, brothers, even though I'm glad they're in, you know, way away, you know, I don't let them get behind me. And why we had to form a black bank, because at the time, we were redlined. White banks would not loan black people money. So we formed a bank that would loan black people money and black contractors money. Now, guess who has a, a, a background in contracting for 10 years? Contracts for the Port of Seattle, Washington State, the city of Seattle, the Central Area Public Development Authority, Africa Town slash Central Area Public Development Authority. If you go check their records, see Bank Airport, you'll find Amari's not here, but you have to look for James Cordell Garrett. Because in business, you can't go to the bank. Omari's not here. Oh, where are you going again? Oh, wait, you don't like our name? Oh, no, you can't borrow our money. So it works good because, you know, business-wise, James C. Garrett, oh, that's one of us. And then politically, Omari's not here. So if you have any questions or concerns, because guess what? I can stand up and talk 24 hours of horror stories how I was put in a cage, stripped, fed cornflakes and water for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two months with no books, no nothing. What they're doing to uh, prisoners in Gitmo, I experienced that as a U.S. soldier because they were trying to break my spirit and get me to be a terrorist, kill people on command. But like I told them, you have to kill me. You have to lock me up, do what you're going to do, kill me, but I don't kill people that don't attack me. Like Muhammad Ali said, the Vietnamese, I don't have no quarrel with the Vietnamese. In fact, when I got in the army, I had Vietnamese friends from being in Vietnam. And I don't get in other people's fights. So if you have any questions, or if I missed anything, or if you want me to go on another 24 hours, you know, I can do that. So I thank you for your attention. I noticed when I was giving my speech at the University of Washington, you know I used to be on the speaker's circuit in the 60s. University of Washington, Washington State, uh, Western Washington, the junior college used to pay me to speak. I could speak for 15 minutes, you know, it's nice talking for 15 minutes and getting $800, $1,000. <laughs> but the problem is the FBI is running behind you, and this is what they did in my FBI file. I lived within 10 blocks of Liberty Bank for 18 years at my dad's house. When I was 18, I didn't really like the way stepmother and him was managing the family, so I moved out, and when I was 19, I started working at the Boeing Airplane Company, and I was making a lot of money, so when I was 19, guess what I did? I bought a house, 424, 24th Avenue East, and I had my older brother used to play with Jimi Hendrix, had to sign co-signs for me because I wasn't 21. Then when I was 25, I bought the duplex next to it. And then later on, I bought a duplex up on 108, 22nd Avenue. And then later on, we acquired, a family acquired a triplex, 918 Martin Luther King. And then I got hooked up in an investment club and we bought six more houses. And how many houses I got now? Zero. But I got 10 square miles in Ghana, West Africa, because we're doing village development. So if you want some more on being proactive, not react. Here comes the police. We fought off the police station. I claim that as hit point in my resume. It was the biggest victory of black.
black people in the Northwest. When we started fighting the police station on 23rd and yesterday where the cannon house is, everybody was saying they're the strongest institution in the society. They come with their guns. And Margaret Clark, the hearing examiner, ruled there was too much opposition to the police station and they couldn't put it there because they had to get a conditional use permit because they were putting it in a residential area. And that was the first political movement, the gay movement, in Seattle, because my shock troops was the gay community. And when they found out that we was going to occupy the building and the police might come, my black comrades, except for two of them, disappeared. And the gay community said they would take the, the arrest, and then after the police refused to come, then the black folks came and guess what they said? Well, Mari, what are all these white folks doing around here? I said, hey, listen, this is what I do. When I go to battle, it's like my baseball team. I coach with the kids that show up. I said, when I go to battle, I work with the people that show up. And once they go on the battlefield, I don't double cross them. Okay, sir. Cool. We need to get on to the actual <laughs> landmark battle. That's what I was waiting for. Greetings, brothers and sisters. My, time. my name is Leif Paul. I'm a longshoreman. I uh, live in the Central District. And I'm a friend of Amari Tahir. He took me. Uh, close friendship when I arrived here, rather destitute uh, a prisoner of the WTO arrest in 1999. So um, anything the newspaper uh, has to say about him is saying it about me too. I want to be associated with Amari Tay here. That's the first thing I want to say. Um, and I'm glad you all got a chance to come in person so you don't have to uh, depend upon the media to uh, get a view of uh, the principal man who's nominating this. And I'm very honored to be volunteering to assist him. Um, now, you all know, as board members, and I apologize for turning my back on the audience. Um, I have to sit in a way where I can see the PowerPoint and address the board at the same time, so I apologize to all of you. Uh, this is just the logistical spaces of the room. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, well, actually, if you can hit the light, that'd be awesome. Um, you all know that there's six specific standards. Uh, You all know there's six specific standards uh, that uh, you guys are, are, are required to consider 